Any gaming fan worth their carefully mined salt pile is sweatily awaiting the release of the next Elder Scrolls game. Whilst yes, we've been hurt by Bethesda's messy titles before, this is the one series we can have a modicum of faith in to prioritise Frostbite Spiders and Kwama over any other type of bug-ridden release. God knows they've learned not to pull a Fallout 76 again. Of course, with a whole new entry in the world of Daedra and Dragon Slaying comes a whole new helping of video game lore. From the mysterious Akaviri in the East to the Lost Dwemer of the Underground, there is plenty of in-game history to be played with when we finally get to see where The Elder Scrolls VI is going to take us. Considering fans don't really know much at all about what they're going to get and what we do know is born from some very educated guesses, it only seems right to take a look at the most pressing mysteries that remain from the series so far that desperately need to be answered going forward. If the lusty Argonian maid doesn't pique your interest, then nothing will. And anyway, what's 4,000 years of in-game history worth in the face of wild speculation? I am the Moth Priest Ash from What Culture Gaming, and this is The Elder Scrolls VI, seven major lore questions we can't wait to see answered. Seven. What happened in the Great Collapse of Winterhold? You'll remember in playing Skyrim that the College of Winterhold, where you get your magic pants on and start practicing fireballs to your heart's content, is surrounded by a city that has definitely seen better days. Hanging off the edge of the cliff and reachable only by a rickety bridge, those in the area speak of the Great Collapse as a time when most of the settlement was eroded by a series of intense storms. Normal enough when you live by the sea, but interestingly, the college survived with nary a scratch on it. Suspicious, that. Whilst it's generally believed that the eruption of Red Mountain in a series of natural disasters was the cause of the sea rising up and battering the city to a stony pulp almost a hundred years prior, due to the college's standing during the event and afterwards, there is a seed of doubt spread by the Nords of the area that they could have been the ones behind it. Or at the very least, could have cast some similar spells of protection to stop the rest of Winterhold from falling into the sea rather than being selfish with their hexes. Hopefully, we'll learn the truth of what exactly happened to cause such a random catastrophe, and if the college saved themselves only in an act of defiance against the city folk. Whilst we know we won't be in Skyrim to find out, there is plenty of opportunity for it to be covered, especially if we're in Hammerfell where magic is largely looked down upon. They'd surely want to out any naughty mages. Six. What really are the Dramora? We've had a release based entirely around the Plains of Oblivion and alternative dimensions. We've had countless interactions with the mysterious Daedric Princes and the Dramora at large, and we've had thousands of stories and intricate pieces of lore relating to their existence, actions, and general with of Tamriel society. But we have still only scratched the surface of this fascinating race of demons that plague the realms of the Elder Scrolls. And we still don't know anything about how their own political motivations and infrastructures work. Whilst Oblivion sadly isn't going to be repeated anytime soon, since there is plenty more interesting stories out there for the devs to dig their teeth into, the Daedra remain a constant of the series in their meddling of human affairs. Generally speaking, there's some interdimensional, all-powerful beings beings with the ability to do whatever the hell they like to to the lesser sentient creatures of the world, but we would still like to know more as to their purpose and origin, and why they still hang around considering we really don't offer them all that much. Where do they live? How do they die? Why do they have such a taste for some brutal heavy metal looking outfits? All questions worth answering eventually. Five. Who is the Night Mother? The Night Mother, who is the acting head of Assassin Collective The Dark Brotherhood and noted mummified corpse in Skyrim, has mysterious origins. Whilst many have speculated who exactly she is in relation to the gods and their various divine counterparts, the truth is that we don't necessarily know her precise backstory, and if she really is, who she's claimed to be at all. A rough overview of the Night Mother is that she is the driving force of death in the Elder Scrolls, an entity to be prayed to if you'd like someone murdered who then then diligently relays these deadly wishes to the Brotherhood through listeners and then speakers. Many speculate that she is in fact the lucky old lady of Breville, a lasting spirit of the kind woman with many children who bless the townsfolk around her. Others say she's an immortal spirit of a Red Guard woman or a Dunmer as recounted in the book titled The Night Mother's Truth. Further still is that she's an incarnation of the Daedric Prince Mephala, or perhaps Severa Magia, an imperial assassin found in Morrowind. The point remains that none of these 
these threads have been rightly confirmed or denied throughout the Elder Scrolls series, meaning we're still awaiting a full account of how the Night Mother came to a position with Sithis, and if Sithis even exists at all or is an extension of her sentience. While speculation and educated guesses have been part and parcel of the Dark Brotherhood's history, it'd still be nice to have some firm facts. Four. When will we get the full copy of the Lusty Argonian Maid? Considering how infamous this smutty little text has become over the years, the Lusty Argonian Maid is due a full release sometime soon, starring the one and only lifts her tail as the subservient maid who continuously gets into steamy situations with Crantius Colto. We have never been blessed with the, uh, ahem full spread that the trusty book has to offer. You can't give the people 50 scales of grey and not give them the full trilogy after all. So far in the mainline games, we've had Volume 1, which more specifically only revealed part of Act 4, Scene 3, and Volume 2, again only dishing out the goods on a section of Act 7, Scene 2. If you're lucky, you can grab the pair in a combined folio. Otherwise, it's up to scratching through the bookshelves to find the dirt should you be in the mood for some humble bread making and, of course, a nightly spear polishing. Oi oi! The Elder Scrolls Online introduced an accompanying song to the collection for those that like their filth in rhyming couplets. But really, we're all impatiently waiting for the next instalment of the Crassius Curio play to come and refresh the meme pool once more. None more so than the man in the Reikling hut who left his plentiful copy strewn about with as many used linens as you could shake a stick at. Pun entirely intended. 3. What are the Elder Scrolls? The name of the series and some seriously hefty poster rolls, the Elder Scrolls themselves have plenty of stories swirling around their magical prophetic pages. But what exactly are they in the first place? With quests tasking you with everything from visiting the ancient texts to outright stealing them for a fat gold bag, the developers aren't shy about banding them about in-game. But their origin and how many really populate the world of Nern have not as yet been officially confirmed. In the Elder Scrolls Online, Protector Arfi describes them in succinct form. The scrolls contain records of all past and future events, but they cannot be read without a severe price. Madness, blindness, even and death. Many believe they were created by the Aedra, but why or when is unknown. If we go full Elder Scrolls nerd, which feels somewhat moot to say considering the video we're in here, then superfans have theorised that the Elder Scrolls were a function of creating the plane of existence that the universe of the game takes place in, named Mundus. Sort of like a blueprint designed to bring the world into existence, which sounds very complicated and difficult as it is. Never mind to get your head around in a world of magic and time manipulation. As with the previous two titles, we can expect a another Elder Scroll to grace our screens. Whether it shines any light on the page's origin or not, we will have to wait and see. Two. What happened to the Dwemer? One of the longest running mysteries in Tamriel is the fate of the Dwemer, a race of underground elves that created automatons and mechanical engineering, importantly leaving massive shiny piles of gold right for the taking in almost every ruin you stumble across. What exactly happened to them is unclear, aside from they all vanished in a great battle many years ago when an architect found an object of great power, the Heart of Lorcan. Wanting to use this for immortality and to make a big-ass golem, other races took offence to its use, attacking them and resulting in their instant disappearance from the realms. Some speculate that they simply turned to ash, whilst others think that their use of the heart made them ascend to a higher plane. What's clear is that no one really knows the truth, so a proper canon answer would be fantastic to dive into come the release of the sixth title. As it's likely we'll be seeing the lands of Hammerfell in the new release, there's a whole new variant of this race to explore, and stories of Rorkin, a chieftain who led his Dwemer people there as a protest against those who made peace with other races. They are some of the earliest settlers of the region. Since we got the spiritual realm of Sovngarde in Skyrim, an ascended plane opened by Lorcan could be the successor to such a place in the Elder Scrolls VI. But we'd settle just for some answers as to what happened at Red Mountain all the same. 1. Will we ever get to see Akavir? Situated to the east of the mainlands of Tamriel, where we have spent every scrolls release so far, Akavir is a continent allegedly home to races of beings far stranger than what we've ever seen. There's vampiric serpent men, a race of tiger people that have attempted to change into dragons, as well as demons, monkey folk, and even some plain old humans, though legend has it that they've all been eaten. In any scenario, it is a pretty nuts place to hang out, which is why those residing in Tamriel know very 
very little about it in the grand scheme of things. Most importantly to The Elder Scrolls VI, however, is that there is a long history of Tamriel and Akavir warring, with the Akavir's influence over the mainlands of the games resulting in the organisation of the Blades and the foundation of the Fighters Guild. They were last invaded by one of Tamriel's emperors, and have remained quiet after reclaiming their land ever since. Too quiet, some might say. In Morrowind, speaking to the priest in the Aldrin Temple conjures this response. I've heard rumours that the Akaviri is making preparations to invade us again. They're apparently only waiting for the Empire to collapse in civil war or some other crisis. We'd certainly need a Hortator then. If we had one, maybe they could travel to Akavir before the invasion and weaken or stop it. Considering we've just had one fat civil war that was the beating heart of Skyrim, as well as murdering the Emperor yourself in the Dark Brotherhood questline, you'd think that the Empire's at its weakest point. Which means the Akaviri are all greased up and ready for invasion in The Elder Scrolls VI. With a Hortator being defined as the leader of a great house in times of crisis, it is exactly the type of chosen one title The Elder Scrolls thrives upon too. Interestingly, Akavir also translates to Dragonland. And what exactly came to burn down villages and wreak havoc on the landscape in Skyrim? Oh, that's right, it was dragons. Interesting that they've cropped back up again right when the Akaviri potentially could too. And that's our list. What else are you hankering for and answering for in Elder Scrolls lore? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture Gaming. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.